Hello, and thank you for joining us for the 2024 North Carolina Medical Society Candidate Series. I'm Randy Aldridge, and I'm here to share with you our member candidates running for state and federal offices. We've given all of them an invitation to come and talk to you about health care and what it means for you, your practice, and the people of North Carolina. Today, I have Mark Hollow. Uh, it's Senate District 45, a retired PA and a member of the Medical Society. Thanks for being here. Thank you for having me. Um, I want to start with a, a, an easy question for you. Just tell us a little bit about your campaign and why you decided to run. Well, I served in the House of Representatives uh, 10 years ago for three terms, six years, and I found it uh, very disturbing that there weren't many medical people in the House or the Senate at that time. Mm -hmm. And I feel like uh, we need to have a voice uh, in, the, in the General Assembly to help explain what it is to be in medicine and to just go over things like that with the people who have no idea. Uh, that's a great reason, especially for our members, I'm sure, will appreciate that. I want to talk with you. I have several questions to ask you today, but I want to talk about uh, the state of North Carolina. It has a, a large rural population, and uh, there are some major gaps in health care, as I'm sure you're aware. What do you think, if, if you're elected, um, we can do to get better health access to these people living in rural areas across the state? Well, it's difficult to, to get medical providers in the rural areas, especially the very rural areas, because it's they really feel isolated at times. And the primary care sometimes is overwhelmed, but also does not have the specialists a lot of times in order to help them out should they need the help. And referrals are sometimes many miles away, and that's difficult. So getting people to go to those rural areas, first of all, they have to like being in a rural area. And uh, second of all, I would think uh, incentives uh, maybe uh, pay back of their uh, loans, uh, but certainly you get out of PA school or medical school and you have a large debt. So that would help. Uh, the, the question is, how do we keep them there? And, and it's difficult. And I think I would have to go to those rural areas and really ask them what they feel they need in order to incentivize them to stay in a rural area. Um, something that has, I think, affected people living in rural areas, well, in anybody across the state, is Medicaid expansion, yes. which has begun this year. You know, 600,000 people available, healthcare is available to them now. The numbers are growing each month of people who have, have registered for it. Um, what do you think the next step is? What, this landmark legislation for North Carolina, what do you think is next for the state when it comes to Medicaid? Well, it, you know, Medicaid is, is a big part of the budget. And my concern is that if it expands so much further, it's going to be hard to pay for it. And so one of the things I would like to see is, first of all, I think people who are on Medicaid, who need to be on Medicaid, should be on it. And they should be able to get health access. Um, but we also need to make sure that there's no fraud. You know, we, so a lot of times Medicaid, Medicare, there's a lot of fraud. And you want to make sure that that money isn't wasted so the money can go to the people who really need it. Do you think that the um, Medicaid expansion should uh, should expand further versus what the, what we've gotten gotten so far? Do you think we, there should be more expansion of Medicaid? Well, Medicaid, from what I remember, uh, has a pretty good uh, plan. I mean, there are some things that are optional that North Carolina covers in Medicaid. So I'm not quite sure how much further to expand it. I mean, this last expansion... Uh, covered a lot of people who were in the gap and who didn't make enough money or then or something like that or didn't have a job for whatever reason so i really think medicaid is pretty well covered at this point for people who need it all right let's talk about something else important to the members of the medical society is prior authorization um it is something that the medical society is working hard on to make some changes to uh, I want to get your perspective on prior auth. Do you think it's the burden that many of our members talk about? And what kind of changes do you think need to be made to it, if any at all? Well, prior authorization is very time consuming. Uh, I spent a lot of time when I was working, I'm retired now after 37 years or so. Uh, and it was very time consuming. You would order an MRI or a CAT scan or something, and then you'd have uh, it denied. And then you'd have to call and, and talk to a provider there and uh, try to get it approved. And a lot of times it was approved. You just had to explain it to them. Mm -hmm. But it was time consuming. You know, it took me out of the, of the uh, examining rooms and it took me out of other things I could be doing in the office other than being on the phone trying to get prior authorization for something that was clearly needed. 
What kind of reforms do you think ought to happen prior authorization? Well, I'm not sure. <laughs> I mean, I honestly don't know. Um, I just know that it's it's burdensome at this point. Um, and I'm not uh, quite sure what um, initiatives have been out there yet, since we're not in the House or the Senate currently. You know, I'm not sure exactly what path to take, but I'm certainly open to suggestions on, on how it can be reformed. So we're not spending time on the phone. Yes, relieving that administrative burden is, is top of list for so many of our members. All right, I just want to um, ask you one more question. There, there's really no, I'm not asking for any type of like um, crystal ball or anything here, but looking ahead at the future of healthcare in North Carolina, what do you see as some of the challenges that medical professionals will be facing? And if you're elected, what do you think are some of the solutions to those challenges? Well, a lot of the challenges right now are just burdensome uh, requirements. Uh, prior authorization uh, is one. Uh, a lot of the paperwork, um, you know, everything has to be on computers now. And before I retired, I found myself looking at the computer instead of looking at the patient. And, uh, you know, things like that. We just need to get government back off and, and uh, let let people do the, the medicine they were trained to do. Um, I, I just to follow up to that real quick. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of our members and a lot of the general public is talking about AI in medicine now, mm -hmm. artificial intelligence. It's a, a bit of a murky subject, and, uh, and, and I'm not sure the world's ready to broach it. Or any, th any thoughts on that at this point? Well, I think it has its, its place. I think it'll be beneficial. However, you can't just put someone in front of a, a computer and, and work on AI because uh, it doesn't take the place of a gut feeling when you're in front of the patient mm -hmm. or or you can tell something is going on where AI is not going to do. You know, you've got to you got to have that hands on approach and you can't rely on a, a computer or uh, algorithm or something like that to tell you what to do. All right. Perfect. Thank you so much. And if people want more information about you, you are on Facebook. Yes. All right, and they just can search for Mark Hollow. Mark Hollow for North Carolina Senate. And it's Hollow, H-O-L-L-O. -L -L -O. We'll have all this information on our website as well. Okay. Thanks for joining us here today. I appreciate it. Thank you. All right, and thank you for watching. Make sure you check this out with our other interviews in our candidate series for 2024.